Live from San Francisco. Extracting the signal from the noise. It's the Cube. Covering nimble storage. The power of predictive analytics. Now your hosts, Jeff Frick and Stu Miniman. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We're in downtown San Francisco at the Nimble Storage Predictive Flash Launch. Uh, a couple of hundred people really excited about really applying big data and analytics to storage and infrastructure. So we want to come up, get the uh, latest information, find the smartest people we could find and pick their brains. So I'm joining this segment by Stu Miniman from Wikibon and Scott Sinclair, Senior Storage Analyst from ESG. Welcome. Thank you, thanks for having me, this is great. So what did you think of the, uh, the presentation? We had a couple of uh, talks a few minutes ago. What was your takeaway? I loved it. I, you know, it's a huge launch. There's so much stuff going on. You know, I've, I've joked with some people here that just one or two of the sub-bullets could have been a launch for other companies. I mean, you're talking about predictive flash and all flash array. You're looking at it's a scale-out technology. It's got encryption, deduplication. It has the ability to pool with with uh, Nimble's hybrid arrays. There's so many different things that are going on here. Um, great launch, uh, really interesting technology. It's a great blend of like flash plus software is eating the world, right? Because at the end of the day, it's that software exactly. that really enables the opportunity so, so, to that So, so I, I guess, you know, Scott, if, if we help, help the people watching this, uh, this is not a me too. This is not the, oh wait, we, we are now the, you know, yes. 14th company uh, that has an all flash array. Um, you know, what, what do you see as really differentiating Nimble and, you know, why is this just not, uh, you know, kind of catching up to some of the other people? Well, and, and that's an excellent point. You can really tell that Nimble tried not to do the, oh well, I guess we got to do an all flash array because everyone seems to be doing it. They really tried to do something different and I think they achieved it. Um, a couple things that really stood out is the ability to create a data pool where you're able to mix and match the all flash arrays with their existing hybrid arrays. And what that allows is you can actually take workloads that exist on their hybrid array and move them while the entire system and data's online over to the all flash array. So simplifying management, speeding up performance, and really adding flexibility. So if you're in an environment and you're not really sure, do I want to go hybrid, do I want to go all flash, I don't have to, I don't have to uh, default to the most expensive one. I can go hybrid and move to all flash if I need so to. So they're moving it back and forth or, you, or just making a, kind of a migration move to better performance? Uh, from what they talked about today, it looked like you can move it back and forth. Back and forth based on whatever the demands are. Yeah, based on the demands and based on, on the needs. Wow, yeah. that's pretty So, so what, what, yeah, what I find is interesting is we like to have our definitions, especially those of us in the analyst world. We have to have here's our bucket and here's what a technology exactly. is. Well, you know, Nimble might have been a hybrid company uh, from their technology, but now they do both, and even that, that ability to migrate and move between different uh, environments reminds me of what the hyperconverged guys uh, have. So I could have a capacity uh, optimized solution, I could have a performance optimized solution, and I can move between those nodes. Uh, so some of the same value propositions that I'd see from the simplification of hyperconvergence, I'm seeing from what, what Nimble can do here. Exactly, and that's what we're talking about is, it's all about simplification and flexibility. And that's what they're doing with their software. I mean, all flash is great. Everybody loves all flash, and, and, and our research has shown that too, and it makes sense. But the flexibility and the simplicity uh, really adds to so much benefit, or provides so much benefit. Yeah, so Scott, what does what your research show you is kind of the economics here? Do, do you expect to see, uh, you know, wildly swinging towards the all flash, or is it is a slower move? Uh, between the, the hybrid and the all flash? So, so we, we've looked at, we actually did some research uh, 2015 looking at the storage market. And we looked at a number of different technologies including flash storage. In all flash, what, what we can say is all flash is, is an established market but it's not a mature market. So a lot of people may look at Nimble's launch and say, you know, hey, are they late? Did they miss the curve? I mean, I think our numbers showed that around, of the organizations that we interviewed, North America, I think we saw about a third of organizations had already deployed an all-flash, so that's fairly significant. But those numbers look to only increase. Um, in, in addition to that, our research has shown, when we ask people what's holding you back from deploying flash, what we find is there is a complete consensus in the fact that everyone loves flash. The only thing that holds them back is price. And if you look at what Nimble's trying to do here is trying to move down the effective cost of flash 
you know, they talk about, I, I think they announced here somewhere between a 33 to, or one third to two thirds reduction in TCO. Now, assuming that those numbers are, are holding, what you're seeing is Nimble's really helping bring down the effective cost of flash. And if you can do that, that's, that's just going to increase the market size because it's going to lead to more organizations being able to adopt Flash for their environment. And do you see customers you know, pre-building out ahead of the curve knowing that you know, Moore's Law is Moore's Law, it's been cranking along for a while, that Flash is going to come mm -hmm. down, there's going to be more efficient ways to use Flash, and building applications in advance of that just anticipating the better ROI uh, as the, those prices come down, the effective prices come down. I, I, I think we are seeing that. I think it's, it's a combination of, uh, I don't know if people are doing it purposely, but there's so much being done in the application space and using data, how we can use data more intelligently through big data analytics or business intelligence. Companies are being forced to use their data smarter to be competitive. And so what that's doing is it's putting more pressure on the data environment, on the storage environments, and companies like Nimble are responding. So whether or not it is someone getting ahead of the curve and saying, hey, look, these technologies are coming, I think we can make our apps more, um, more demanding, or they're being driven by their competition to just be smarter in how they, and use data more to drive their business better, and they need a solution. Whatever is driving it, the bottom line is, organizations are finding that they need flash and they're deploying as much as they can afford. All right. So so Scott, you know, where do you see Nimble really fitting in the ecosystem as a whole? I guess for, from my standpoint, uh, I, I like what they said about it's lowering costs and making a better experience using those analytics that they have. Um, but you know, storage is only a piece of the puzzle and you know, talking about how they fit in converged infrastructure, um, their cloud play is mostly that they are supplier to some service providers like iLand yeah. uh, who they have on there. Um, so you know, wh where do you see them uh, competing against, you know, fitting into some of the, these big waves of change that are going on in it, IT? In, in terms of the larger storage ecosystem, I still see them as a, you know, a transactional workload centric storage provider, right? And you know, some people call all flash arrays or hybrid arrays or SAN arrays or NAS arrays, whatever it is. The, the bottom line is it's it's an array designed to handle transactional workloads. Now, one of the things that surprised me in here, in addition to some of the things we talked about, is they added a scale out capability. So while I would have said, you know, hey, that's great, they have a, they have a very usable, very effective uh, all-flash array, the, when they, you add scale out in there and the ability to get to you know, a million IOPS plus whatever that is, it actually opens you up to some, some net new markets in, in what type of workloads you can go after. All that being said, you're still in that transactional space. You're not in a cloud space, you know, hype, Converge, yes, hyper-converge, no, some other spaces, maybe not, but, it, but at the end of the day, that, that space I just described, that transactional workload storage, that still is pretty much the dominant space in the industry right now. Yeah, uh, another area they touched on is you know, the financial transactions. Mm -hmm. So Nimble says that they're allowing customers to either buy from a CapEx model or move to more of a storage on demand model, which sounds mm -hmm. a lot more like you know, what we expect to see in the public cloud, some of the service providers. You know, what are you hearing from users? What do you think of what Nimble's uh, you know, announcing here? Uh, is this you know, game changer or just you know, part of the story overall that's interesting? Uh, yeah. There are a number of organizations that have gone this direction. I love it, by the way. I love flexibility. Simply because what, what we've seen is, you would think everyone would love the cloud model. It's about OpEx, I only pay for what I need. But what's interesting is, when actually talking to customers, some organizations are actually not budgeted to handle uh, handle transactions yeah, that yeah, way. I, I mean, everybody loves it until the CFO says, wait, I didn't plan for that, right? Exactly, you know? exactly, <laughs> exactly. And well, or, or just their budget cycles are saying, no, you. I, I don't know how to bill you on a monthly basis. I, you have a quarter of a million dollars this quarter that you have to spend, that's how it works. And so, if, if you're, it depends on your budget cycles. Based on how your business handles budget cycles, you may prefer one versus the other. So providing flexibility tends to be the better way to do it. Yeah, as, as always, we, we say in the industry that the technology tends to lead the way because you've all got all those political and operational <laughs> issues, exactly. the inertia uh, in the enterprise. So I, I guess, let me, let me talk about that. The, the inertia in the enterprise. Um, there was a bold statement from Gartner saying that, you know, you cannot keep doing things the way that you're doing it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, something we say often, yes. but, you know, for Gartner to say that is, you know, this, the status quo is no good. Uh, so, 
you know, are enterprises getting it? You know, the customers that you're talking to, uh, what, what does your research say about companies moving forward, being, I guess, more aggressive into you know, finding new ways of uh, leveraging their infrastructure and uh, you know, having IT be a tool to drive the business, not just uh, something that was a drag on the business? Wow, a bunch yeah. of points in there. Yeah. So number one, I think they're getting it, right? And what I mean by that is that the current status quo is unsustainable the big siloed arrays or kind of just having this general purpose 15K spinning drive array doesn't make as much sense anymore, especially at scale. And what we've seen is, um, despite the fact that a number of organizations are getting that, inertia still exists. For example, one of the big things that I think has really held back some adoption in, of flash technology is, there still is this paradigm of evaluating storage on a dollar per gig basis. Oh, well disk is X dollar per gig, but flash is a higher dollar per gig. When in fact they're ignoring the IOPS per, gig, uh, per dollar that they're getting, and what they can do with those IOPS. And the fact that if you eliminate the bottleneck that storage provides, servers can do more, your applications can do more. And actually you get, and our research has actually shown, you're actually, after deploying uh, flash storage, a number of organizations are actually able to get this ripple effect to where they get more benefits through the remainder of their IT their environment. And so, <laughs> so organizations are starting to get it, but still, it's always important to remember that for whatever the analysts like myself say, or, or Gartner, or anybody else, the storage industry is still very conservative space. You're talking about people's data. And IT organizations will probably move a little slower than they probably should. Yeah, I, I, I mean, both storage and networking, uh, the, the thing you always say is if you save the company a million dollars, you get a pat on the back. If you lose something or the company goes down, you're out of a job exactly. and the company might be out of business. Exactly. So we, we understand a little bit why there's some hesitancy, but uh, you know, I, we're at a point, I mean, you talked about the, you know, these technologies, um, while they not may, be prevalent everywhere, they're established, they're understood, lots of companies have done mm -hmm. it. Nimble's got 7,500 customers, so this isn't some unknown startup that we say, ah, can I trust it? It's not now, now, now something I can, I can trust these technologies. And, 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 I can and, and that's an excellent point, yeah. is we're, if, if you're afraid of using flash storage because you can't trust it, yeah. well then you are in the vast minority. Yeah. Everyone is already using this. And honestly, that should not be an excuse anymore. Yeah, um, I'm curious uh, what your take is. Uh, Nimble said that we're about to enter a new era of predictive flash. Do you think that's the next wave? I think Nimble would like it to be. <laughs> um, I, I, that being said, I love, I, I love the predictive flash technology, and I think, I think a number of organizations are predicting themselves as the next wave. I and mean, you see this a lot. I, I think predictive flash creates a tremendous amount of value. I definitely think that this moves Nimble into a leader section of not only all flash players, but transactional storage system players. Um, that being said, I think the next wave of storage is a mismatch of the cloud, software defined, hyperconverged, and flash all. Basically, we have in storage a plethora of options that we didn't have before. If you think about it, you know, eight years ago, the fact that we had an array that could do both SAN and NAS was a big deal. Like, that was huge. Now we have cloud, we have software defined, we have object, we have, you know, uh, converge, hyper-converge, all flash, hybrid, a huge number of different options. And I think, if you want to say what the next wave of storage is, it's going to be, just the fact that marrying all those different options up with all the different workload demands. Exactly, I mean, that's what you, the smart guys, you, you guys got to figure out is, you know, how do I start doing my costing, you know, on that piece of infrastructure that's powering that application versus exactly. just the cost per gigabyte, the cost per ter terabyte, it's interesting. So you've mentioned before, like with Amazon, you know, change the way people buy storage. I'm just buying a stack of, of Capacity. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not buying gigabytes. I'm not buying terabytes. So how are the, how I just always think of, uh, of of cost accounting 101, right? You, <laughs> because you never really know how much anything costs. So how do how do people start to rethink the infrastructure to match it more with the applications and and really bring those into alignment? So the appropriate infrastructure, appropriate storage is used for the appropriate application, which is 
a higher value application than this other application. So yeah, it warrants the, the higher performance flash infrastructure. Well, and, and to add on to the challenge that you just brought up is, to a large extent, it requires you to predict the future. Because you're not just predicting what your apps are doing today or understanding them. You got to know what they're going to need three, five, you know, two, three, five years from now. So that's where the flexibility comes in. You know, I kind of started talking about that, right? Is the ability to mix and match hybrid and all flash. What, what you need is, and I think this is where Nimble's striving to deliver, is solutions that allow you to easily adapt your infrastructure as the needs change. Because at the end of the day, no matter how good you are at planning, you're not going to get it 100% right. So the more adaptable and predictive analytics that you can get out of your um, infrastructure, like what Nimble has, especially when you include what they offer with InfoSight and the analytic capabilities from that and the, the consulting capabilities of that, um, the better you're able to tune your environment, the better off you'll be. All right, well, I think we're uh, about out of time. I was going to give you the last word, but that was a pretty good last word. Any uh, last little bits uh, that you're going to be working on the next six months? What are you excited about? I, you know, I'm just excited about everything that's going on in storage. Excited about this. We're working on, I'm doing uh, a, a tremendous amount of analysis on the software-defined storage space, which I also think is very interesting. Um, but honestly, you know, just an exciting time to be in storage. Awesome. Well, Scott, Thank you very much. Absolutely. Thanks for stopping by. All it's right. been a few minutes. All right, I'm Jeff Frick with Stu Miniman, a Scott Sinclair Senior Storage Analyst from ESG. You're watching theCUBE. We're at the Nimble Predictive Storage launch. We'll be back with our next guest after this short break. Thanks for watching. <laughs>